Fine. But first, I get to talk about some cool stuff. Then we'll get into showing you how to do this and all the tricks I've learned. First off, one of you idiots got me one of these Shogun candy bags and nobody put their name on it. So I don't know who to thank, but it was on my Amazon wish list. If you want to buy me stuff off of my Amazon wish list, that's in the link in the description down there. It's full of Japanese candies. I'm not sponsored or anything. It's just somebody bought it off of my wish list and sent it to me. Some of my favorite stuff in here, like there's a big fish cracker. A lot of it was candy, the swirly thing. It's like a marshmallow apple flavored jelly. Uh, there was a bunch of candies in there, but my wife and I already broke into it. Uh, there's these melon flavored panda shaped candies, crackers, I think actually. This big shrimp flavored fish cracker, I guess. These are like the sticks that they make Pocky out of. Uh, this looks like to be a sugar coated biscuit of some kind or, or wafer of some kind. There's no marking on it or anything except for the character on the thing. I don't know which way it goes because I can't read Japanese. And there are a bunch of these like sugar candies. There was the Japanese version of Pop Rocks in there. It's all pretty cool stuff. But yeah, whoever whoever got this off of my Amazon wish list, thank you. I don't know who did it. But if you want to get me stuff off of my wish list, it's in the description below. Um, there's stuff on there for like my YouTube recording setup and stuff like that. You're more than welcome to get stuff off of there. It ships straight to me. You don't have to. I have it set up for privacy. It only shows you my screen name, SK Pac-Man, and it doesn't give you my address or anything, so it's pretty safe, for me at least, for you to send stuff to me. Uh, it doesn't add anything on there. And if, for the love of God, please put something in the notes or memo or whatever it says to send to me off of the wish list. Uh, it'll send a note. You put your screen name in there. I will thank you in a video if you buy me stuff off my wish list. Let me clean up the thing that I just dropped. Second off, let me put this away. Secondly, thank you to everyone who's subscribed over the past few weeks. This last 28 days in my analytics has been nuts. So I greatly appreciate everybody who's come in here and subscribed. I want to do something special for a subscriber goal. So for 3000 subscribers, I'm showing you guys how I do my hacking, the tips and tricks that I've learned over the past few years, and my motivations behind hacking stuff so that you guys have a better idea of what I'm doing in the background when I go to hack something or, you know, stuff like that. The next thing is I want to let me know in the comments because I think for 5,000 subscribers, I want to do something really special. I read recently that the chip company Pocky had shut down. Like there was a big controversy over their one chip challenges uh, last year in September, a kid died. And um, it says on the back of their one chip challenges that it's not for kids. It's in big, bold letters. You, you can't miss it. This, this ain't for kids. It has all kinds of health warnings on it. I eat spicy foods on a regular basis. I eat stuff about this spicy pretty frequently. This spicy, I'd say maybe two, three times a year. My usual heat level that I enjoy is like pure habanero or ghost pepper. Somewhere out around there is my comfort level. This is like Carolina Reaper and Naga Viper. So this is really hot. This is, I guarantee you this isn't going to be the hottest thing I've ever eaten. If you look back on my channel, I have some clips from when I did the Death Nut Challenge on Twitch. And that's probably the hottest thing I have ever eaten and will probably ever eat. It was stupid. But I can tolerate spicy things. So I'm not saying that, like, go out and do this. Uh, but also, you can't buy these anymore. They have been removed. Pocky 
as a company no longer exists. I think Hershey and Amplify are the brands that owned or one of those one of those companies owned Pocky. And uh, after the controversy of September last year of a kid dying after eating one of these, uh, the company just shut down. They're not making chips anymore. You can't buy them anywhere. So if you have a bag of Pocky brand chips, savor them because that's probably the last you're ever going to get. I have like, I think two of these 2023 challenges. It's still perfectly sealed. It still has the tape. It's still 100% sealed. So it's still good. It expired a month ago. <laughs> eh, it's still edible. It's a it's a fully sealed vacuum sealed chip. It'll be fine. So for 5,000 subscribers, let me know in the comments if you want to see me do this for 5,000 subscribers. Sound good? Cool. On to the rest of the video. Hey, I, I was in the middle of editing this video and I forgot to mention you totally should join my Discord. Links in the description. I have plans for videos for stuff like the something awful and try not to laugh. Back, back to the video. So what I used to use to hack stuff is called cheat engine. I have it up on screen here. What cheat engine is typically used for is finding variables that you know, stuff that you can track. So like the position of the player, the uh, if you have any money or experience points or health points uh, anything that you can quantify stuff that you can stuff that you can track if that makes sense so i'm gonna go into here and select benny and the ink machine you can't see that because it's a separate pop-up but you click on that little blue icon up here a separate pop-up for process lists come up and you pick the game and then you have this scan stuff. So it's not gonna do anything useful until you're actually inside of the level. So to do what I did, and probably the easiest way to do it, is to get the player height first. And um, using Cheat Engine, the best way to do that is to find some stairs. Like what you need to do is figure out what the number is that corresponds to your height, right? To you standing, walking around. So what I'm going to do is go over to Cheat Engine and go uh, unknown initial value using all value types and just hit first scan. And it's going to come up with a f lot of addresses. Now, the way this Cheat Engine works is a game, when it runs, requests a certain amount of RAM from your computer, from your graphics card, uh, and it allocates a big old chunk to it. And the game, the, all the memory runs in a small section of that chunk that it requested. And Cheat Engine scans your RAM and uh, when you select a process, runs on just, uh, not runs on, but watches that one little section of the RAM. And you can pull all the data out of there. So what I did is unknown value for all value types, and it found 2.1 billion variables. And that could be literally anything, the state of lights, the state of uh, shaders. So from here, I've scanned what this should be. Then what I'm going to do is walk down the stairs and my height, layer height inside of the 3D environment should have changed so I'm going to say it is decreased value. Next scan. Then we wait for it to compare previous values to new values. So another way to do this uh, is while you're standing here to uh, narrow down that, you can say unchanged value because technically that value shouldn't have changed from where you're standing. And just hit next scan a bunch of times and it'll cut down on the number of stuff found. And don't worry, it's going to beep every time. So let's go back up the stairs and say increased value. Next scan. 
and then unchanged. Scan a bunch more times. Now I have keyboard shortcuts tied to these, and I can just spin around and not have to worry about it. So I'm going to go back down, decreased, increased, decreased. You can go somewhere else and check that. So we're down to 183 now. Let's try and find something else that you have to step up on. Probably this pipe right here. Yeah. So if you jump and stand on it, you're increased. So we're down to 36. I'm going to pause it. Uh, add selected addresses. Down here now is all the stuff that we've selected as, hey, this might be the thing. What you need to do now is watch as it moves around. So what I'm guessing is this guy is our Y. And if I set a hotkey set value to 7, Y, okay. Oh. Oh, okay. So that actually put us way, way above. Is this not fall throughable anymore? It has a ceiling now. Interesting. So now you have that jump ability, right? So as I showed in uh, my videos and Fusion Z Gamer and a few other people have have shown, we can now jump high above and look at stuff. Yeah. Okay. So now. With those, uh... This lift could use a few dry cells. Uh-huh. Now with those hot keys in place, I can just hop around. And that's how I did it in... Let's see what you're hiding down there, old friend. Right, and that's how I did it in my original videos, just hopping around like that out outside of the map. But there's more sophisticated ways to do this now. There's more sophisticated ways to look behind things, right? Man. Okay, so then stuff like this. There he is. Hey, buddy. Long time no see, friend. <laughs> but, yeah, that's basically how I did it with uh, Cheat Engine. Now, there's more, again, like I said, there's more sophisticated ways to do this. And um, I'm going to show you what they are in Secrets of the Machine. So let me load that up real quick, and I'll show you exactly what I'm using. Now, for Unity games, for... If you wanted to look at stuff behind the scenes or fly around or have a separate like camera that you can look at stuff with. I have what's called Unity Explorer. Basically, um, you have a loader called Melon Loader. You can get it online. I'm not going to put a link. Look for it yourself. Um, then there's Unity Explorer is a mod for uh, melon loader. If I hit F7, I already have it loaded up. This is what uh, Unity Explorer looks like. And uh, we don't need the log. We don't need Object Explorer right now. Freecam is the one that you use most often. So this is Freecam. And that's what I use to just look around. But inside of here. Uh, oh, it's only in the condemned thing. Um the back of that board that says condemned says wandering is a terrible sin. So they ha they still have yet to finish this because it's supposed to be five here. They have three coffins. We've already explored basically everything there is to explore here. But I want to give you an example of things that you can use to infer what's going on for some stuff, right? Um park my dude right here and we're going to do 
Object Explorer, and Free Camp. So we start over here because that's where the uh, zero point is in the map. We are over here. Now you'll notice there's no player model. There, there's never a player model in these games. Um, normally it would be standing right about here, but it's not. So, uh, what I want to look at is inspector, inspect world. So that's door two, right? And I can destroy it, or I can instantiate it, which means bring it back in. Oh, so here's a simple example. So this character here in the game files is called evil. If I can turn it on and off in here. Stuff like that. So you can really dive deep into where things are and what they do and get a good sense of like where stuff is. You see the whole map without having to worry about render distance and stuff. So, um, this is Unity Explorer in Melon Loader. It's super useful, as you've seen. So, the next thing that you can do with Cheat Engine. So, I, I showed you, like, editing a player's position and moving them around. But what if you wanted unlimited money to buy whatever you wanted in Balatro? So we're going to look for an exact value of any type of 14. So it gave us 17,000 results. And that shouldn't change while we're playing. And it's likely going to be in one of these first ones. Play one round, wait for that value to change. Then when it does change, you watch it change in Cheat Engine and go from there. So once I hit this, the value should change in Cheat Engine. So now I can do a next scan, exact value for 21. And it gave me these. So it's likely not any of those. It's probably one of these. We're going to narrow it down further by buying something and watching it go down. Ah. Or just do that. It's one of these three. So now we've got it narrowed down to just a, a few of them. Let's try changing one of them and see if our money changes here. So that didn't work. We're going to. Do a new scan for 17. Hey, there's the one. So now I can change the value to something super high and lock it so that it can't change anymore. And now I can buy everything that I want. Sure, I'll grab that. Reroll. Now you can do unlimited rerolls. So this is another one. You can set your chips or set your, yeah, set your money as high as you want. And it'll give you ungodly amount of chips per hand. So if I change my money, I'm going to try and set it to just below the maximum. So now... This card does 1.8 E29. And because my money is so big, it, it's broken the UI. It doesn't matter what I play, I'm going to win anyways. Like, here's a two pair. And because of this bowl, That's an E30 off the bat. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. 
you can use it to hack the money in a game or experience points or anything like that. Anything that has a number to it, Cheat Engine can look it up, modify it, lock it. Um, they even make it, it, talented developers can make what's called trainers for these where it's set up to automatically look for stuff in the game and bring it into a, an easy executable to do stuff like move you around or change your speed and stuff like that. And that's typically how cheat engine is used is people will manually find all the stuff and then make a script called a trainer to do it for them. There are other programs out there that are similar to that do pretty much the same thing just without cheat engine. Uh, again, I'm not going to link any of these. I have a separate video in the works that talks about the um, ethics and practices of using this kind of stuff. Um, I don't condone hacking or cheating uh, using these kinds of hacks in multiplayer games, especially online multiplayer games. Um, this is just for single player stuff. Stuff that it doesn't matter to anyone else if you do this, just yourself. You're only enhancing your experience. There's other tools out there that work similar to Unity Explorer. Uh, one's called Unreal Explorer or Unreal Unlocker. Uh, it works basically the same way. You get similar commands. Um, that's what I used for the Poppy Playtime Chapter 1 hacking. So basically, if you were wondering how I hack the games, this is how I do it. Anyway. Thank you all so much for 3,000 subscribers. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do this for 5,000 subscribers. Leave a comment. Let me know if you guys do your own hacking or what tools you use, any of that stuff. Don't Please don't put any links in, in the comments. Those will be automatically deleted. Just tell me the name of the program that you use. I will look it up myself. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Share it with a friend. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you guys at 5,000 subscribers.